Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, Groucho, Jack Benny, Sci-Fi, we have classic TV shows and movies right here on Wayback Machine 1. I hope you'll subscribe today. Thanks. Company, makers of fine foods for the whole family, presents America's favorite family, the Nelsons. Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. And now a word about one of the many fine Quaker products, Aunt Jemima Pancake Mix. Hi, honey. I'm all through. Boy, am I hungry. I could eat a horse. You've been peeking. For your information, you're looking at a man who just painted a 50-foot fence. They got them on the fence, too. Oh, brother. Well, your, uh, your pancakes look a little lumpy. That's corn. Corn? In the pancakes? Mm-hmm. Sound good? Mm, they are good. What's the matter? The label too pretty to throw away? Oh, be still. For your information, I'm saving this niblet's label to send in with the Aunt Jemima box top and get back the money I spent for the corn. Try Aunt Jemima's golden corn pancakes. Add one half cup of niblets to your batter. Aunt Jemima will refund the price you pay for the corn. For details, see this ad or check with your grocer. If you like pancakes, then sure as shaken, they're Aunt Jemima's. Now, Quaker invites you to enjoy... Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure you hadn't forgotten. Who are you talking to? Katie. Well, let me talk to her sister when you're finished, will you? Uh, how about 8 o'clock? Oh, don't hang up. I want to talk to Mary. Oh, well, why don't I pick you up at the sorority house? Okay, that'd be fine. But let me talk to Ricky when you're finished. Maybe you'd better make it a little later, say about 8.30. Is Ricky there? I don't know. We'll find out. Is Ricky there? Yeah, he's right here. Well, let me talk to him, eh? Okay, then I'll pick you up at the house about 8.30. It's long. Hi, Mary. No, this is Katie. Oh, Katie. Uh, could I talk to Mary, please? Yeah, just a second. Oh, David said something about picking you girls up about 8.30. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, who's this? Me, your mother. Oh, <laughs> I'll be through in just a second. Okay. Oh, breakfast's almost ready. Hi. Hi. Well, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? It sure is. Well, I think Ricky's using the phone. Oh, I was supposed to call Joe. When you finish talking to Joe, will you let me talk to Clara? We're going to a sale at the Emporium. Didn't you go to a sale last week? Yeah, but I didn't buy anything. Don't look so worried. I may not buy anything today, either. <laughs> I, I, I'm just afraid the law of averages is about to catch up with you, and indirectly with me. Good morning, dear. Here's a meal, Pop. Oh, thanks a lot. Anything for me? Well, here's one for you. It looks like a bill from that sale you didn't buy anything at. Oh. Anything else? Uh, here's one addressed to the two of us. Do you want to open it? Who's it from? I don't know. It's just a return address on it. Do you know anybody in... It looks like Wayne City. Never heard of it. It's from the Johnsons. Who? Uh, the Johnsons. Remember those people we met up at the lodge uh, the summer before last? Oh, yes. They were very nice. Says some friends of theirs named Clayton uh, are coming to town, and they told them to look us up. They hope we won't mind that they're very nice people. Oh, I'm sure they must be. When are they going to be here? Uh, <laughs> they're arriving today. Today? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, their plane gets in at 3.30 this afternoon. Well, they don't expect us to meet them, do they? Well, I, I would say they kind of suggested here, yes. Well, that's awfully short notice. Well, you see, uh, this is what you get for saying, if you're ever down our way, be sure and look us up. Well, I didn't say that. You did. You always do. Well, wh wh whoever said it, you, you invited the Johnsons, not the Claytons. Who are the Claytons? It says here we met them. Yeah, I think I remember them. They have two daughters, I believe. Well, yeah, that's what it says here. Uh, they were only up to the lodge for a couple of days. They were visiting the Johnsons. You have a better memory than I have. I don't remember them at all. Remember who? 
Oh, some people we met up at the lodge, friends of the Johnsons. Oh, I remember them. Uh, the Johnsons, that is. Yeah, they were the ones who loaned us the speedboat. Not the Johnsons. They loaned us the water skis. Well, I don't remember that. I remember they loaned me some swim fins. Oh, anyway, they were real nice people. Well, what made you think of them, Pop? You gonna buy a speedboat or some swim fins? <laughs> no, uh, some friends of theirs are coming to town. They have two very attractive daughters, too. But I, I, that's not fair to the boys. We don't know if the girls are attractive or not. Well, they're about the same age as the boys. As I recall, they were very attractive. Sounds pretty dangerous to me. Well, when are they going to be here? Well, they're routing this afternoon. Do you boys have dates for tonight? Oh, yeah, I'm afraid we do, Mom. Fortunately. Well, now, now, why do you say a thing like that? Well, you know, blind dates can be pretty disastrous. Well, they can be pretty interesting, too. Well, if the boys have already made dates, there's nothing much they can do about it anyway. Wait a second, Pop. Let's be sporting about this. Heads, we take the girls out. Tails, we don't. <laughs> well, Tails, you lose, Pop. Too bad. What do you want to do? Well, I, I wanted to play golf. I, I have a date with Joe. Well, go ahead. Well, I, I can't do that. They're such good friends of the Johnsons. Well, it is awfully short notice. I wish they'd given us a few more days to make some plans. Yeah, well, it'd sure help a lot if I could remember them. But what do they look like? Well, I'm not sure I remember them. I just think I do. They're only up there one weekend. Hey, hey, uh, wait a second. Uh, I wonder if that was the Saturday I was playing poker. Well, it could have been. Well, yeah, remember uh, there was this man standing behind me? I I'll bet that was Clayton. <laughs> Raise him, Charlie. Uh, Ozzy. Well, raise him. Well, I'll see her raise and raise you. Raise him again. Go ahead, Charlie. He's just bluffing. He sees your raise and raises you. Raises you. <laughs> well, I'll just see your raise and raise you. Let me see those cards again. Are you kidding? Well, I've gone this far. I'll just see you. What do you got? Uh, <coughs> kings and uh, deuces. <laughs> I got a full house. <laughs> oh, well, wait, wait a minute. He's got four kings. Where do you see four kings? Well, aren't deuces wild? No! <laughs> My mistake. I'm sorry, Charlie. <laughs> I can laugh at it now. That was the guy, all right. How could I forget him? No, wait a minute. His name wasn't Clayton. I remember you telling me about it. Oh, well, maybe you're right. Clayton. Hey, I, I, I wonder if he was that terrific dancer. Terrific dancer? I don't remember him. Well, don't he? He wasn't really. He just thought he was. Uh, don't you remember they were having a Saturday night dance and the orchestra was playing a tango? <laughs> I'm not going to give up my golf game for that gigolo. No, his name wasn't Clayton. It was Fernando something or other. Maybe you're right. Oh, uh, Joe. Hi, Oz. Uh, uh, look, uh, uh, maybe you can help us out. Uh, do you remember uh, a couple of summers ago we went up to the lodge together? Yeah. Well, we met some people named Johnson. Uh, do you remember them? Oh, yeah, real nice people. Well, yeah. Well, now, now, now there was another couple who came up to visit them for a weekend. And their name was Clayton. Do you remember them? Clayton. 
What's so funny? I remember them all right, but I don't want to start any family argument. You won't start any argument. What do you remember about them? Well, I don't remember the man so very well, but I sure remember his wife all right. She was a real shapely blonde. You see, Oz was out on the putting green, minding his own business. Or at least, that's what he claimed. Hi. Oh, good morning. Isn't it a beautiful day? Well, yes, it certainly is. I thought I'd play a little golf this morning. Oh, well, good for you. You've got a nice day for it. The only thing is, though, I've never played before. Do you know anything about the game? Oh, well, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. I, I've played at it for quite a few years. Oh, I bet you played beautifully. <laughs> uh, what makes you say that? Oh, I don't know. You just look like the athletic type. Oh, well, uh, actually, uh, golf is, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's a strange sort of a game. Yes, they say that putting is the most important part of the game. Well, uh, no, no, all the strokes are, are, are important. Of course, it, it is true if you want to score well, you've got to putt well. Oh, isn't that cute? Uh, 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 what is? What you just said. If you want to score well, you've got to putt well. Oh. oh, I must remember that. No, if you want to score well, you've, you've got, got a, a putt a well. Do you have a pencil? I'd love to write that down. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, uh, uh, actually, it is not complicated. Uh, all you do is just uh, uh, tap the ball into the cup. Would you show me, please? You seem to make everything sound so, so interesting. <laughs> well... Are you expecting someone? Well, uh, I, I was uh, expecting my, my uh, caddy. Uh, well, uh, uh, oh, okay, uh, just uh, uh, tap the ball into the uh, cup here. Okay. Are you watching me? Yes, yes, I, I, I'm watching. Am I bending over far enough? Uh, you, I, I would say you are definitely from, from, from this angle. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Oh, I didn't do that very well at all, did I? Well, well that, 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 that wasn't too bad, because you, you, you hit the ball a little too hard. See, you have to uh, uh, stroke it firmly, but, but uh, gently. Would you show me, please? Uh, uh, well, uh... Now... Don't uh, grip the club too tight. That's it, just, uh, May I play through? No! This is this is my cat, my uh, I got cat, my uh, my wife. Uh, this this is the uh, the young lady I I uh, wasn't telling you about. Uh, it, it seems to me uh, maybe I do remember something like that. <laughs> I think you do. Because you enlarged on the story a little. I did not. That's exactly the way you told it to me. Well, okay, what's all this got to do with the Claytons? I told you, that was Mrs. Clayton. I it was? You know, uh, uh, Harriet, uh, maybe we owe it to the Johnsons to go out and meet these people. We do? <laughs> no, 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 don't get me wrong now. I'm trying not to. <laughs> it, it, it wouldn't take us very long to drive out to the airport. Would you care to let me in on this? Well, see, uh, we got this letter from the Johnsons this morning, and the Claytons are coming to town, and they'd like us to meet them at the airport. Today? Well, yeah, uh, this afternoon. But we've got a date to play golf. Well, yes, I, I know. Why should you give up your golf game to meet a couple of people you hardly know? That's exactly the way I feel. They should have given you more notice. Well, I, I, I suppose you're right. I, I, I really don't think they'd expect us to change our plans at the last minute like this. That's right. Besides, you're supposed to go shopping with Clara this afternoon, aren't you, Harriet? I was figuring on it. See, if it were the Johnsons, that'd be different. But these are people we don't even remember. That is, we're not sure. That's right. Uh, besides, uh, I'm sure the Johnsons must have given them our phone number, so if they really want to get in touch with us, they'll phone us. There's no reason for us to change all our plans. Come on, okay. Joe. <laughs> you don't have to get mad about it. Well, I'm not getting mad. Uh, what do you think, Harriet? I think that's right. Okay, well, uh, happy bargain hunting. <laughs> so long, Harriet. Bye. Goodbye, Joe. Oh, Oz. Uh, yeah? If it'll make you feel any better, that blonde in the polka dot shorts wasn't Mrs. Clayton. <laughs> Why, that was, it's, uh, um... Do you know why delicious hot Quaker Oats is so good for so many families? Quaker Oats is rich in protein. A breakfast of delicious Quaker Oats with milk and sugar for a family of four provides as much total protein as six average eggs. 
as much total protein as 18 pieces of toast, and almost as much total protein as 18 strips of bacon. That's why your family gets that wonderful stick-to-the-ribs feeling with Quaker Oats, that wonderful feeling of well-being. And what hot breakfast is as easy and fast to prepare as Quaker Oats? Just pour it into boiling salted water, and you have creamy, smooth, delicious oatmeal with only one minute of actual cooking. And here's a tip. Before and after serving Quaker Oats, keep the pan tightly covered, and it rinses clean instantly. No scouring, no bother. So be sure your whole family gets the protein they need with a delicious hot breakfast of high-protein Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats, the same high-protein oatmeal. Uh, Dave! Dave! Want me to move my car for you, Pop? Uh, would you please, Dave? I can't quite make it here. Are you going to play golf after all, huh, Pops? Yeah. At least that's what he calls it. <laughs> you know, I think you're right. I don't see why you should drive all the way out to the airport to meet some people you don't even remember. Yeah, well, that's what your mother and I figured. It's a straight back, Dave. Uh, Pop? Yeah? What about these girls? Uh, what do they look like? Well, uh, to be honest with you, Rick, I don't remember them. Uh, your mother says they're very attractive. I don't even remember the parents. Uh, why, why do you ask? Oh, I was just wondering. I'll see you later, Pop. Uh, Bye, Mr. Reynolds. So okay, long, so long. You make it now, Pop? Uh, yeah, it's fine, Dave. Uh, Pop, do you remember what these girls look like? Uh, no, I, I don't, Dave. Okay. Well, have a good game. Bye, Mr. Reynolds. So long, Dave. Uh, what'd he say? What do you mean? When you asked him about the girls. Well, how'd you know I asked him about the girls? Well, if I thought of asking him, I'm sure you would. <laughs> How about that, Oz? Yeah, it's a nice shot. You didn't even see it. Sure I did. It's... Uh... Yeah, that's right, in the rough. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's a shame. Something wrong with your watch, Oz? No. Why do you say that? Well, you keep looking at it all the time. Yeah, I, I just uh, want to see what time it is. What time is it? It's, uh, it's just about 2 o'clock. Good. Let's play golf. Uh, uh, how many more holes do we have to play? Well, this is a ninth. Nine, Let's see, that's ten more, uh, ten, ten, ten more. Ten more. How long do you think it'll take us to play him? <laughs> at the rate you're going, we'll be lucky if we finish before dark. Uh, that, that plane gets in at 3.30. What plane? Uh, the plane those people are on, the Claytons. It gets in at 3.30. If it gets in on time. It's kind of a depressing feeling to uh, arrive at the airport in a strange city and there's nobody there to meet you, don't you think? Well, I don't think so. I kind of like it. You do really? Well, I like it better than to be met by a couple of strangers who obviously would rather not be down there. Yeah, I suppose so. Come on, let's go out. Uh, Joe. Uh, look, if you want to go down to the airport and meet those people, why don't you go ahead? Well, I, I don't want to meet them, but I, I just uh, suppose they phone our house. Don't you think somebody should be home just in case they phone? But you're right in the middle of a golf game. Yeah, I know it. And you're losing. <laughs> look, look uh, Doc and Darby are in the threesome ahead of us, so why don't we pick up and you can join them on the 10th? Because it's more fun to beat you. Who says you're going to beat me? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's finish the game. <laughs> I'll bet you two dollars on the match. You got yourself a bet. Okay, here. You win by default. Hey, wait a minute, Oz! Come back here! You can catch him on the tent! <laughs> oh, hello there. What are you doing home? Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just, just home. Did you finish 18 holes so soon? Uh, uh, no, I, I, I didn't finish. Uh, to tell you the truth, I, I didn't feel much like playing. Uh, what are you doing home? Oh, we got through early. Anybody call? No, uh, not yet. Uh, the plane doesn't get in until 3.30. Oh, so that's why you came home, too, huh? Well, I, I, I got to thinking about it. And, well, I think the least we can do is be here in case the Clayton's phone us. Yes, I must admit, it's not too pleasant arriving in a strange city with nobody to meet you. Well, uh, that's exactly what I was saying to Joe. Hi. Oh, hi, oh, fellow. Hi, fellow. Oh, hi. What happened to the golf game or the bargain sale or whatever it was? Well, we changed our minds. You could have stayed out a little longer. The plane doesn't get in until 3.30. Oh, you guessed it too, huh? Well, we thought we ought to be here in case anybody calls. Hey, as long as you canceled all your plans, why don't you go out to the airport? Yeah, uh, why didn't we? Well, I never thought of it. Well, uh, we've still got plenty of time to make it. Well, come on, let's go. See you later, fellas. Hello, okay. fellas. Bye. You know, I've been thinking. I've been thinking the same thing, and we just can't do it. Well, do what? 
call off our dates with Katie and Mary. Isn't that what you were thinking? Well, yeah. Well, look, why don't you call them up? They'll probably understand. Me? Why don't you call them? Well, you're the oldest. You've had more experience at these things. <laughs> How come I always have more experience at doing the dirty work? What am I supposed to tell her? Just tell her the truth. Hello, is Katie there? Oh, thank you. Hello, Katie. Uh, this is Dave. I is Mary there? Mary? Uh, yes, please. Ricky wants to talk to her. I don't want to talk to her. You wanted to talk to her this morning. Hello, Mary? Uh, uh, just a second. Hello, uh, Mary? How are you? What do I say to her? Just tell her the truth. Hello, uh, Mary? I just called to tell you the truth. Flight 22 from Salt Lake City, now arriving at gate 12. Oh, it's 3.35. Their plane ought to be in by now. Yeah. Passenger Durkee, please report to the ticket counter. Passenger Durkee, please you recognize report anybody? To the no, not yet. Passenger Durkee, please. Hey. No, dear, she's not the one. <laughs> Well, I, I, I wasn't sure without the polka dot shorts. <laughs> Wait a second. Those people look familiar. Do you see a phone booth? Yeah, there's one right over there, honey, but it's busy. You think we really ought to call these people? What's their name again? Nelson. We only met them once, and it was a long time ago. Oh, darling, I think we have to. Oh, let's forget the whole thing. Well, we can't do that. Besides, what would we tell the Johnsons? Well, why don't you just tell them we tried to call and nobody answered? No, no, that wouldn't be fair. Look, if it's the guy I think it is, I'd rather not meet him again anyway. I don't want to sit around all evening while he shows you how to tango. Well, for that matter, you don't think I'm too anxious to see that blonde wife of his again, do you? Blonde wife? Yes, you remember, the one in the sunsuit with the polka dot shorts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe we better give him a call. Let's go find a cab. <laughs> well, how do you like that? He thought I was the guy who was doing the tango with you. Well, how about me? She thought I was the blonde in the polka dot shorts. <laughs> Pardon me, uh, could you tell me where the bus stop is? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, just go right out this door and, and turn to your right. Thank you. Uh, are, are you a stranger in town? But yes, I am. Welcome to our city. <laughs> Not only that, I, I gave Joe two dollars to call off the golf game and I would have beaten him. Well, what about me? You should have seen some of the bargains I passed up. I thought you didn't find anything worth buying. Well, I didn't have time to look. What about us? We broke our dates and they didn't even bring their daughters with them. Katie, you'll probably never speak to me again. I'll get it. You know whose fault this whole thing is? The Johnsons. Well, Katie, Mary, hi, come on in. Hi. Hey, hi. what are you girls doing here? We're checking up on you. Checking up on us? Well, yes, you must admit that's a pretty crazy story you told us. Oh, it was the truth. Did you meet the girl? Well, uh, not exactly. See, they didn't show up. Oh, oh that's, that's a shame. shame. <laughs> Did you girls make dates for tonight? No, we didn't. Well, then how about going ahead with our original plans? Oh, well, uh, we can't do that. Suppose the other girls show up. Oh, uh, they won't show up. Well, how do you know? Well, uh, I'm positive. They probably would have been a couple of lemons anyway. Oh, yeah, they probably would have been. Oh, why don't you come on in? Oh, well, thanks, but we have some people out in the car. Oh, well, why don't you bring them in, too? Okay, I'll get them there. All right. I'd like you to meet my mother and father. Oh, I'd love to. Uh, Mom, uh, this is Mary Clayton. Hello, Mary. Hello. And this is my father. Oh, uh, uh, how do you do? Uh, uh, uh Clayton? Uh, she and Katie are sisters. Well, uh, uh, that's a coincidence. The, the people we were supposed to meet uh, are, are named Clayton. Well, yes. Hey, wait a second. Something the matter? David, this is my mother and father. This is David Nelson. How do you do? How do you do? Well, thank you. Well, well, thank you. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Certainly nice to see you. Mrs. Nelson, uh, Harriet, my yeah, wife. Hello. Oh, my Helen. <laughs> we thought we'd fly in and surprise the girls. They're in college here. Well, how nice. Won't you come in and sit down? Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. It's so nice to see you folks well, uh, uh, again. Uh, would you sit down, please? You knew all along, didn't you? No, we didn't, did we, Mary? Well, let's put it this way. This is the first time anybody ever broke a date with us to go out with us. <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night. I'll bet you did know all along. Uh, we were going to call you from the airport, but we didn't want to impose upon you. Oh, well, I I'm glad we finally got together anyway. Why didn't you tell them the truth, dear? Oh, well, 
You, you see, we were only up at the lodge for one day, and I remembered meeting some people named Nelson, but to be perfectly honest with you, I, I couldn't seem to place you. <laughs> we thought you were a tango expert. <laughs> hey, uh, a tango expert? Well, what are you laughing at? You thought he was a tango expert. Me? I've got two left feet. Well, I, I, I'll tell you something funny. Uh, uh, Harriet thought your wife was a, a blonde with polka dot shorts. <laughs> I've never owned a pair of polka dot shorts. <laughs> Say, uh, whatever happened to her anyway? Never mind. <laughs> you know, I can't understand why we had so much trouble trying to place you. Well, of course, the thing I remember most about the weekend was that darn firecracker exploding in my hand. Firecracker? Uh, on Labor Day? Uh, Labor Day? We were up there on the 4th of July weekend. We were up there in September. <laughs> no wonder we didn't remember each other. But the Johnsons were there when we were there. And they were there when we were there, too. Well, I, I guess the, the one thing we're sure of is that we both know the Johnsons. <laughs> and, and the girl with the polka dot shorts. How are they? Uh, not the short, the, the, uh, the Johnsons. Oh, they're just, just fine. They're such nice people. You should see Walter now. He's gotten so big you'd hardly know him. Walter, I thought their son's name was George. They don't have any children. Well, then, then who's Walter? He's their dog, a big Airedale. <laughs> you know something? I don't think we remember the Johnsons. Well, they certainly remember you. At least Ed does. I'll bet he's told that story about you a hundred times. Uh, what story? Uh, the one about the poker game. You, when he had the full house and you tried to bluff him out of it with two pair. <laughs> you mean that was Ed? Well, yeah, it was Ed. He said that you thought deuces were wild or something. <laughs> well, how about a cup of coffee and a piece of homemade apple pie? Well, it sounds great to me. Mm, me too. Come on in the kitchen with me. All right. Have you. <laughs> Are you sure you don't tango? Oh, no. <laughs> Next week, Ozzy and Harriet will be brought to you by Eastman Kodak Company. Here's a thrill beyond compare. That first look at the big city. And because these young men have a Brownie Star camera, they'll see more, learn more, have more to remember. East side, west side, all around the town. They're getting the fun on film. Wait till the gang back home sees this one. Indoors, too, as in the Museum of Natural History, there's lots to see, lots to remember. And their Brownie Star camera saves it all. Now the big stem, as the boys get their first fling on Broadway. Home again, they're the envy of every kid on the block, thanks to a camera that costs less than $10. Right now, some boy or girl you know would give the world for a Brownie Star camera. There are three models to choose from, and you couldn't find a better gift. Welcome to all our new subscribers, and thanks to all our regular subscribers. For classic TV and movies, you've come to the right place. Way back, Machine One, baby.